on this episode of Jeff Does Vegas. What I tell my clients is it's really good to mix games. So that way, when you go in, you could say, hey, my game is a mix between blackjack, baccarat, poker. And automatically, in less than like three seconds, you have a pretty good idea of this game. Las Vegas. It's more than just a city. It's a feeling. It's that feeling of excitement when you spot the lights of the strip out the airplane window. It's that feeling of awe as you stroll down the boulevard, taking in the sights and sounds. And it's that feeling of satisfaction knowing that you're in the greatest city in the world. Over 42 million people from around the world share that feeling every year. And I'm one of them. Taking you to the world-famous Vegas Strip and beyond, my name is Jeff, and this is Jeff Does Vegas. Hey there, and welcome to episode number 114 of Jeff Does Vegas. Before we get rolling for this episode of the show, I want to thank my guests from the last episode, Matt and Angela Stabile of Stabile Productions. Matt and Angela are the creators and producers of one of the longest running shows on the Vegas Strip, X Burlesque, which just celebrated its 20th anniversary. We talked about Matt and Angela's history in Vegas, the evolution of X Burlesque, and what's led to the show's longevity in Sin City. If you haven't listened as of yet, head to the archives at jeffdoesvegas.com or search out episode number 113, 20 Years of X, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, here we go. On to the show. Every year, inventors come up with dozens of ideas for new casino table games, but only a handful actually make it to the casino floor. Maybe you've got an idea for a new game floating around in your brain, and you've been wondering how to make it reality and get it out to the Vegas gaming community. My guest for this episode of the podcast can potentially help you out with that. Making her third appearance on the show is Heather Ferris, the CEO and founder of Vegas Aces Services. Heather and I talked about the process behind creating a new game, what makes for a good casino game and some of the challenges behind trying to convince casinos to give a new game a chance. Please enjoy my conversation with Heather Ferris. Vegas Aces Services LLC is a marketing company. Uh, We started helping table game inventors get their game into casinos. Uh, We consult with table game inventors and help get them through the process of inventing a table game, starting from the brainstorming uh, part, going all the way to placing your game in a casino. Uh, We do their rack cards. We do felt layouts. We do logos, websites, uh, the lollipop sign that you see on the uh, table. And then, like I said, do consulting to help them through the process. Okay. So say, for example, somebody comes to you and says, Heather, I have got this incredible idea for a casino version of Go Fish. Help me (laughs) get this into the casino. What is the first thing a person should do when they've got this idea for a game? Well, when I have someone come up to me and do that, I usually schedule a meeting. And for the first meeting, we go over... Uh, where you are in the process, what are your goals, where you want to go. And also we ask certain questions where we know this is going to be vital later on. And we want to be sure that they have thought about these things and they know where they're going. And then of course we talk about budget and then what services they want. So some of those questions, for example, would be, um, can you explain your table game in 15 to 30 seconds? And of course, 15 seconds is ideal. Uh, Basically, you're trying to give an elevator pitch for your game. You want to be able to explain your game uh, in as quickly as possible, but also you want the game to be simple, but not boring. So if you can explain it in 15 seconds and the person knows immediately what you're talking about, you know, you got a good thing. If it takes you five minutes to explain something and the player is still confused, you might want to work on that a little bit. Right. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, essentially I would imagine part of it too is you guys would try and 
poke holes in the game. And I mean, and not necessarily in a negative way, but just to try to sort of play the, the what if game on this game. Not poke holes so much, but if we see something that we know is going to be a problem later on, we will definitely bring it up to our clients. Um, so, for example, if a client comes up to us and they have a game that requires a custom deck of playing cards, we will tell them this is going to be very hard to get in casinos because casinos don't want to use custom playing cards. They don't want to spend the money to buy it. They don't want to keep track of these extra cards. Um, it is uh, a negative as far as that goes. If the table game inventor insists on doing that, we typically tell them, well, um, in that case, it would be the inventor who would have to buy these cards and then give them to the casinos. And since casinos go through playing cards, uh, for example, if you're on blackjack and you're doing an eight deck shoe every shift and there's three shifts, you would change cards and that would be on a daily basis. So if you have to constantly uh, replace cards on a daily basis, this could start getting expensive. Um, so we basically consult in that way and try to tell them, you know, Hey, this is where you're going to hit a roadblock later on. If you change it early, it's going to be more beneficial for you. What are some of the other things that people might not think of when it comes to putting together a game? I mean, for example, as I say, I just kind of threw out half jokingly, you know, competitive casino go fish. But I mean, what what are some of the things that people might not necessarily think of when they're trying to brainstorm or come up with this idea for this, you know, the next brilliant game? We see a lot of clients come to us thinking that they can invent a game and get it in a casino in less than a month and start making profit immediately. And it doesn't work like that. Um, it takes a very long time to invent a casino game. It takes uh, years uh, it's not something that you just throw together and you sell to a casino and you're making the big bucks. It takes a lot of time, effort, dedication, energy. Um, you're starting a business and just like a business, you're going to work night and day for many, many years before you start to see a return. And another thing that people don't think about is how much money it's going to take Um you would not believe how many people come to me and they're like, I got this great game and I'm ready to go. And, you know, we're ready to start. We have everything done. And I ask them, okay, what's your budget? Zero dollars. <laughs> okay. Um, have you done your BMM GLI math report, which is something that's required? Or have you applied to, you know, the gaming control board? Cause they're like, oh, totally done. And they're like, no, we haven't done that yet. And I'm like, okay, well, it's $3,000 for your BMM report. It's $3,000 for the application. For, And then I start going through like the cost of how much it's going to cost them. And this is not even like my business. This We haven't even gone to the marketing yet. This is just like the required cost that they're going to have to pay to put their game in a casino. And they're like, oh, we didn't know. We didn't think about that. <laughs> And, and I mean, so you're you're throwing out things like BMM GLI math report. So for those of us that don't necessarily know what you're talking about, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I have a bit of an idea. I'm guessing. I can I can I take a guess at what I think that is? Oh yeah, go so for it. Is that you convincing, essentially putting together a report to convince the casino that this mathematically is going to work? not necessarily in their favor, but is going to be somewhat advantageous for them. You are half correct. Um, not fully, but not completely wrong either. So the thing is, is um, a GLI or a BMM math report is required from the Nevada Gaming Control Board to put your game in a casino. You have to have that report. And that report analyzes your game to figure out what the math is. Um, what is the return? What is your house edge? Uh, these are numbers that the casino needs to know in order to put your game in their casino. And it's 
people don't realize that this is actually one of the last steps they take. Uh, first, they have to hire an independent mathematician. And that mathematician uh, is the one that goes through and does the initial mathematics of the game. And then they give that math report to BMM or GLI. And a lot of people come to me and they're like, we don't see why we have to get this done twice. And I always tell them, well, if you go to GLI or BMM without the math report, they have to do it. And it's going to be way more than $3,000. Um, if you pay, you know, $1,000 for the math report from a mathematician, you're saving yourself in the long run by having the big company do all that work and spend all that time and effort and money uh, doing that. What are some other things that people might need to take into consideration if they're thinking of trying to uh, put together a game and and get it from concept to to final product and get it put into a casino? Two things, actually. It usually takes between fifty and a hundred thousand to get your game from idea phase to actually in the casino. And you're going to have many different versions. A lot of people fall in love with their game and they think this is the game we're going with. But what we find is as you go to casinos and pitch the game and try to sell them the game, they give you very helpful suggestions for how to make the game better. So if you bomb a pitch at a casino, uh, it's not bad. It's not horrible. It's not like you failed because typically what happens is the casino manager will be like, well, I really like this game, but you use custom cards and we're not going to go with the custom cards. And that's why we're not going to go with the game. Well, he just gave you a really big piece of advice. Use something other than the custom cards. So what we have or what we see is table game inventors doing multiple versions of the game, which is how you start getting into the fifty and $100,000 range. So they could have version one, version two, version three. Um, and that all starts adding up. And so those math reports that you mentioned earlier that were like five or 6,000 bucks a pop, would you have to redo those every time you make a revision to the game? It depends. It depends on the game. It depends on what you change. It, it really just depends on the situation. So we've kind of ballparked the, um, the costs involved in getting a game from concept to casino floor. Um, but what about time-wise? I mean, what's, what's the length of time that a person's going to be looking at to go from having this brilliant, bright idea to actually having people playing the game for real? When you invent a casino game, Typically, it is only about one to three percent of inventors get their game into a casino for longer than one year or get it into multiple placements. So um, it takes a long time. If it doesn't work out the first time, I tell my clients, just keep going at it. Just keep emailing them. Keep trying. Eventually, someone will say yes. But it takes a long time. It takes minimum a year maximum I've seen 10 years. And I'm not a hundred percent familiar with how, um, gaming regulations work within the state of Nevada, but from my limited knowledge, I understand that there's a couple of bodies involved. There's the gaming control board. There's the Nevada gaming commission. Uh, what roles do they have in this whole process? So the Nevada gaming control board ensures that the casinos maintain the honesty and integrity of the game. If you know casino history, you know that we've had some problems with, you know, mob and uh, people skimming the books or, you know, taking money. There's been a lot of problems. So the Nevada Gaming Control Board was created to make sure that the casinos are on the up and up, that they deal the game fairly, um, that the game is there's an integrity to the game. So for example, uh, a dealer's not putting a magnet under a roulette table, you know, they're making sure that's not happening. Right. And um, one of those things that they do besides ensuring that the casinos uh, are honest is they do investigations. If there's any cheating, um, they look into that. They, also look into new casino table games. They make sure that the casinos do a field trial 
which is a temporary trial period where the casino um, hosts the game for probably about like three months. And then um, if the numbers are good, they report those number. Well, no matter what, they report the numbers to <laughs> right. the, uh, yeah, not if they're good. No matter what, they report the numbers to the Nevada Gaming Control Board. And then the Gaming Control Board accepts the application and the game can go through. After the break, Heather fills us in on how many new games are pitched each year and what might make your idea desirable to a casino owner. That's next on Jeff Does Vegas. So here's a question then, I guess if somebody is an aspiring table game inventor and thinks that they have a a, a great idea for a new game, what makes for a good game? And I mean, I guess this is a question that I'd want to see answered from both a player side of things and from a casino side of things. Yeah. Um, So the thing that makes a good game is it's simple, but it's not stupid. You don't want anything complex. You don't want anything involved. You don't want um, rounds. You don't want, and of course, there's exception to every rule, um, but that's typically what you're going for. You want to be able to explain it clearly, concisely in 15 seconds. What I tell my clients is it's really good to mix games. So that way, when you go in, you could say, hey, and this is a good example. There's a game out there called Bakpo. Uh, the person would go up and be like, hey, my game is a mix between blackjack, baccarat, poker. And automatically, in less than like three seconds or five seconds, you have a pretty good idea of this game because you know blackjack, you know baccarat, you know poker. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one way to make a successful game. So conversely, then, what makes for a bad game? I mean, uh, do you have any examples of of terrible games? Well, I don't have examples because you never heard of them because they were so (laughs) terrible that you wouldn't hear of them. Right. Um, I have seen terrible examples, uh, examples where it's really complicated. Um, You're just sitting there scratching your head like, I do not understand this at all. Uh, If they use custom tables, You want the table to be the same size as a blackjack table. If you go to a carnival pit in any casino, you'll notice that all of those games are on the same table that blackjack is on. Um, It's really easy for casinos to just use one of the blackjack tables and throw your layout on there. Um, So when people come in and they have like custom tables where it's like this really large bulky table and, you know, it looks sort of like a version of craps, but it's like mini and there's all this complicated things that you look at it and you're like, I have no idea what's going on. Um, That would be bad. That would be very bad. Custom equipment, custom cards. That's typically bad. You want to use the same equipment that casino already has. So they already have, you know, a 52 deck of cards. They have, you know, you could use a joker. They have dice for craps, that type of a thing. You want to use what the casino has so they don't have to buy or maintain any new equipment. So what I'm hearing here, Heather, is my idea for competitive casino go fish is really not all that stupid of an idea because it's from what you're telling me, it, it's ticking all the boxes that you've just mentioned. It uses a standard set of cards. It can be played on a regular size table. I, I'm I'm really starting to think that there's something here. Well, I'd like to see more information or do you want to tell me a 15 second pitch real quick? I don't even need 15 seconds. I, I can do it in five seconds or less. Here we go. It's go fish, but for money. <laughs> I think you could just leave it at that and it would be perfect. (laughs) Oh, I love it. (laughs) That that idea, copyright, Jeff Does Vegas 2022. Uh, I'm telling you right now, if on my next trip to Vegas, somewhere on a casino floor, I see competitive go fish for money, I'm not going to be a very happy camper. (laughs) Um, out of curiosity, how many new games are pitched each year? I mean, how many do you see in a year and how many actually make it onto the casino floor each year? 
I don't know the exact number because, you know, of course, there's stuff happening that I don't know about. Um, so I can't account for that. But what I have been told is casino managers typically see uh, one to three uh, table game inventors a month where they're trying to pitch their game to the uh, casino manager. And then if you go to conferences like the Cutting Edge Conference, which is now being run uh, by Richard Marcus, um, you'll see table game inventors there. And there's typically, it could range like from probably like 30 to 40, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And that's just off the top of my head. Um, They might be in a bigger venue, so it might be more now. Uh, So I would say more than 100. With that many new games being pitched every year, is it a lot of brand new games or is it a lot of um, variations on existing games? Or as you mentioned earlier, uh, the combination of, for example, the uh, Baccarat and poker called Bach Po. Is it that kind of thing where people will take existing games and, and figure out ways to combine them? What, what, do you, what do you see mostly? I get people <laughs> honestly majority of my inventors come to me and they don't they don't have the how to play rules written out they don't have the how to deal rules written out they haven't really thought it through very well um so typically what i tell people is write that down write down how to play also write down the how to deal instructions for uh, dealing your game and then sit down and actually play with your friends and see if there's any problems, see if there's any snags. If your friends have a question or they don't know what's going on, that's not a bad thing because other players will feel that way. So you can use that to uh, make your game better. You know, you can use their advice and everything to make their game better. And I'm really impressed when I have table game inventors come to me and uh, they have everything like written, figured out. They've been working on it for a while. You know, they really thought it through and it's like, okay, you're ready. Let's go. And I would imagine, too, that uh, marketing the the game and getting word out about the game to casinos and and casino companies and and such is probably one of the biggest challenges of the whole process as well. It is very challenging. It is um, challenging to just get their attention. A lot of casino managers And I'm not saying this like it's anything new. I'm sure a lot of people realize this. A lot of casino managers are busy. They have stuff to do, you know? So if you go into a casino and you're like, hey, I got this great game I want you to look at, the casino manager's like, well, I got a meeting in five minutes that I have to go to, and I'm trying to put out these three fires and get this shift started. Uh, So it is really hard to sit down and get them to look at the game, especially after COVID. After COVID, uh, the face-to-face pitches and demos have really cut down a lot. Um, What I tell my clients is it's good to have a website. It's good to have a promo video where you can promote the game, uh, have that be like less than 30 seconds. And then you can have a demo video where you actually play the game out so they could get a good idea of like how the game is played. Um, This would be the same as your pitch and your demo when you would go to them and have the meeting with them. Um, Or you can have a demo game online, like a web-based demo game. Uh, So if they have five minutes, they could sit down and play your game. And these, of course, are all things that you and the people that you work with in your team at Vegas Aces uh, can help out with, which I think is just absolutely awesome. Of course. (laughs) Thank you. And if there are any aspiring inventors out there, people that have got better ideas than my competitive casino goldfish idea, um, Heather, how can they get in touch with you and find out a little bit more about the process and what you guys do? Uh, So yeah, please uh, check out the website. It's Vegas-Aces.com. You could find all of our articles on there. We have more articles coming up. Uh, You could find all of our social media links on there. Uh, Feel free to follow us, like us, uh, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, And then if they want to contact me directly, uh, my email is Heather at vegas-aces.com or you could fill out our contact form on our website excellent heather thank you so much once again for taking time to jump on the podcast and uh, have a conversation about this really really do appreciate it and uh, we'll chat again soon have a great one (laughs) 
Once again, if you'd like to learn more about Heather, Vegas Aces, and how they can help you out, visit them online at Vegas-Aces.com. And be sure to follow Vegas Aces on Facebook at Vegas-Aces and on Twitter at Vegas underscore Aces. Of course, you can find all these links in the show notes at JeffDoesVegas.com. And that wraps up another episode of Jeff Does Vegas. If you've got feedback on this episode of the show, or any other episode for that matter, or you've got suggestions and ideas for topics you'd like me to cover on the podcast, please feel free to reach out to me via Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Jeff Does Vegas. Or drop me an email directly at Jeff at JeffDoesVegas.com. In the meantime, thank you so much for checking out the show. Be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcasts so you'll know the moment new episodes are available. And don't forget to visit JeffDoesVegas.com for past episodes and show notes. My name is Jeff, and this has been Jeff Does Vegas, a Walker New Media production. Walker New Media.